All right, guys, why, welcome back to Weld.com. While you guys are at home, we asked you guys what videos you want to see on Weld.com. So there are lots of people that posted. So one I picked out was at essentially stock. That's a guy who uh, posted it. It's tips for saving gas, uh, tips for saving gas. Well, it's tips for saving gas. So I'm gonna be showing you guys four different ways to save gas. The first problem I see is having too much TFH. When your ball is up here like this, up in your ball tube, it's bad. Basically stop, let go of your trigger and put your gun down. When I'm talking about the nozzle sizes, it's 5 eighths is the ID. That's what we're going by from the, from one side to the other side, it's 5 eighths. The minimum you want to uh, run is 22 CFH, typical 30, 35, and the max you want to run is 55 CFH. I never run up to 55 CFH, but that's the max you can run out of that 5 eighths ID nozzle. So the general purpose, like short circuit, flux core, I usually run 30, 35. Spray, I'm up there at 40. So that's the 5 8 nozzle. The hobbyist welder, like the 3 8 nozzle, generally want to run the minimum is 15 to 18 CFH. The typical is 25 to 30. And the max they want you to run is about 35 to 40. So you don't need to run that high because if you run high, you're going to produce a bad weld. It's going to cause turbulence. And it's going to suck the atmosphere into your welding envelope. So if you want to save shielding gas, run the correct CFH on the nozzle you're using. Tip number two to save gas is pre-flow and post-flow, knowing when to use them and how to use them. On the pre-flow, I usually set at 0.2 of a second or half second. When you pull the trigger, as soon as that arc initiates, I already have my shielding gas, my 7525, surrounding that arc. All right, it basically pushed all my containments out of the way. So I know I have good good shielding gas right in there already. On the post flow, you don't need 10, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever, you don't need to max your machine out, it's unnecessary. When you're welding on carbon steel, you're spraying or short circuiting, you only need really two to three seconds at the most on carbon steel, I mean, that's it. Stainless steel, I would run a little bit longer because you want the stainless to uh, not blue on you. So all these newer machines, most of them have memory uh, saving functions. Let's say you just got done welding carbon steel. You got your pre-flow set, your post-flow, wire feed speed, amps, whatever, all that set. Well, you go into your memory section and you hit save, save function one or save memory one. So that's all set. So you don't have to go write that down. So that's another quick way that you could uh, have everything set and keep on the move and help save gas too. All right, if you still feel like you're wasting gas, check for leaks. That's tip number three is check for leaks, okay? So you check your, all your connections, your fittings, your machine brass seats. Basically, I would start at the brass, I mean the regulator. Basically, that machine brass area where you put your wrench on at. Make sure that's not damaged and check the steel part of the seat on the bottle. Make sure that's not damaged. Basically, you're looking for like a little nick where it's been machined nice and flush and smooth. And the second, the second one from that would be the connection of the hose that little brass connection. You want to make sure the threads are not damaged, everything's seat nice. Take a little uh, leak detectant, squirt it over there. Then uh, the next one would be the crimp hose onto the, uh, on the hose bib or onto the fitting. Basically, you want to make sure that's crimped nice and tight. Make sure that the hose clamp is not over-tightened. When you over-tighten the hose clamp, it like digs into the rubber. So sometimes you got to check for that. So check with that with that leak detectant. And on back of the machine, you got a little machine seat too there on the machine fitting and on the hose fitting. You wanna make sure there's no nick in there or nothing. And make sure you connect them together right, nice and snug. You don't wanna over tighten them. And then actually there's a nut on the inside of the machine. You gotta take the cover of the machine off. If you still have a leak, you basically take the cover of the machine off and there's actually a nut where you screw your hose in on back of the um, machine. It's holding that fitting on. You basically wanna make sure that nut's tight because it will loosen up, then you're, you actually will leak gas on the inside that feeds from your inside your machine to your wire feeder. Then the lastly thing I would check is the O-rings on back of your uh, MIG gun, your tail end. Make sure your O-rings are all nice and good, not ripped. And you wanna make sure your gun's shoved up inside there really good, all right? All right, fourth and final tip is surge regulator. This is basically, what this is, is basically when you're pulling your trigger on your MIG gun, you get a blast of gas. Well, that blast of gas is from between your solenoid and to, from your regulator, well, the, that pressure builds up. There's actually pressure, even though it says CFH on your regulator. You're actually building about 80 PSI in there. Well, what this does is regulate that PSI building up between your solenoid and your regulator. So it basically stops it right here at, uh, what is it? Your high PSI stopping right here, and it regulates it. 
when you, as soon as you pull that trigger, your solenoid opens up, there's actually low, a low blast comes out, really hardly no blast. So you won't get a big psh coming out. You actually hear it, it'll go psh at the end as soon as you pull your trigger. So it eliminates all that high blast coming out of argon coming out or 75, 25 or whatever. So this mounts very easily, mounts right underneath the regulator with two, two adjustable wrenches within seconds. So that's where this mounts. This not, might not be good for a home hobbyist because it runs about 150 bucks. But if you're running a bigger shop with multiple welders, it's probably essential to run it. Thanks for watching weld.com guys. If you guys got any comments or any questions, drop them in the comments below. Let us know, we're always watching the comments. We'll, well, we'll reply as fast as we can back to you guys. Uh, make sure you guys are always watching new episodes Monday and Friday. Uh, stay safe out there. All right, stay healthy for sure. Uh, thanks for watching well.com. Learning is key. I'm Man Cup, thank you.